Pedophilia is a term that is described as indulging in carnal pleasures for the court. And what if you found out that there is a pedophiliac king roaming around the streets of Mexico who came just for this purpose? Such is the story of 28-year-old Juana, or La Peque, meaning the little one. In the past few years, the Mexican cartels have claimed more than 150,000 lives through their blatant killings and rivalries. In Latin America, the number of imprisoned women have increased dramatically over the last 25 years. This number has almost doubled from less than 40,000 women in the early 2000s to over 74,000 women prisoners in the region in 2011. Although women are still a minority in prisons, making up only about 6% of Latin America's incarcerated population, the number of women behind bars is growing disproportionately compared to men. And thanks to these cartels, most of these women are in prison for offenses. Apart from selling substances and arms, these cartels also hire sicarios or hitmen. But in the past few years, these cartels have started hiring female assassins known as sicarias. They are also thirsty and fame-hungry Many sicarias post their photos with guns on social media sites. They also flaunt their money and even tigers. Most of these women aren't imprisoned for large-scale trafficking or violent offenses, but rather for non-violent offenses related to micro-trafficking and small-scale possession of illegal substances. While there are some exceptions, women often enter the illegal substance trade as small-time mules and have little chance of advancement in terms of economic income and decision-making power. Women are trapped in a cycle of poverty and crime because of their limited mobility. Well, such is the story of Juana, or La Peque. Juana was born in Jalisco, Mexico. At a very young age, she was romantically involved with a guy more than 20 years her age. At the age of 15, Juana had a child, and the child's father left her. Juana had no money and couldn't feed her child, so she took to street work. Gradually, she met one of the most technologically advanced Mexican cartels, called Los Zetas. Juana said that she worked in a bar where the feared Los Zetas charged 5,000 pesos bi-weekly. But the more the business earned, the more the bar was charged. Then a person would come and tell you, we are from the Zetas and you have to pay them money if you want to continue with your business. If the bar owner doesn't pay and doesn't close the deal, they're screwed and the Zetas will leave them. But those who pay the amount receive protection. For the Zetas, it's just a matter of saying, so-and-so is going too far. And at that moment, the hitman arrived to resolve things. But things were going to change for Juana. Her brother got into a mess with the cartel and was killed. She found out that her brother's wife and the Zetas commander, who killed her brother, had been dismembered and burned. One afternoon when they met another Zetas commander, he asked them, do you know where your brother is? What's been done with him? Was he torn? Juana answered yes to the first two questions and no to the last one. That's good, keep that consolation. You and your mom know where to go to cry, where to take a flower. Besides, you know that they didn't torn him, the Zetas commander told them. What's left to console, Juana thought but didn't say anything. After this, Juana herself joined the cartel. In countries like Ecuador, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Panama, and Argentina, more than 80% of women in prison are in prison for narcotic offenses. In other Latin American countries, the population for women in prison for these offenses is between 30 and 60% of the total female prison population. And young Juana chose this as her career path. Juana found a way to make money with them. She was incorporated into the cartel at a young age. At first, Juana had small responsibilities. Juana was now officially involved with the Los Zetas cartel and was given the title of Alconeo. As an Alconeo, she was supposed to keep an eye on the rival gangs and police so that other members of Zetas don't get caught. But even that was tough terrain for Juana to walk upon. Juana said that if she did not do her job well, she would be chained and fed only one taco a day. Such was the gruesome and treacherous terror that the Zetas operated on. But as time passed by, Juana started getting bigger responsibilities. She was still a teenager when she saw a Zeta cartel member smash a person's head with a mace. There was blood all over, and this terrified Juana, but she slowly became desensitized to gore. Juana was then honored with a nickname. She was now called La Peque, or the little one. It might be because her stature or age. After being around the most violent murder daily, her desensitization turned into something worse. She started getting attracted to cruel violence. Joanna was now a respected member of the Zetas cartel and was promoted to a Sicaria. However, the story doesn't end there. In a recent blog that Joanna wrote from inside the jail, she gave pretty graphic and gruesome details about her story as a Sicaria. She said that the sight of blood was magnetic to her after she would 
her victim. She would cut their head off and drench herself in them. She would also drink their liquids while it was warm. But not just this, some Zetas cartel members also said that La Peque was fond of pleasuring herself with the carcass of the victim after she had killed them. She would use their head and other body parts to have intimate relations with the deceased victim. But Juana is not frightening at all. A lot of these Zacarias and cartel mules often post their photographs on social media. In one photo, Juana looks like a model for a gun company. She has beautiful red hair, a charming body, and an innocent smile. The only dangerous thing about this photograph is that Joanna is holding a machine gun in her hand. Apart from the gun, everything about Joanna looks normal. From some of these photos, we can see she wants to be seen as a threat. After all, Joanna confessed to five men drinking their warm liquids and deriving intimate pleasures from their carcasses. In 2016, she was caught after killing five men and sentenced to prison in California. In her blog, she gave grotesque and emotional details of her life. Ever since I was a little girl, I was a rebel, and then became a substance addict and an alcoholic. This throws light on why she was attracted to the cartel life, but these cases get more distorted from here on. She also wrote on her blog that after she saw a head crushed with a mace, she felt that she was scarred for life. I remember feeling sad and thinking, I did not want to end up like that. Maybe it was fear that provoked her to become as disturbed as her fellow cartel friends in order to avoid getting violent or murdered. But then as you continue to read her blog, you instantly realize how depraved she is. She continues, I feel excited by it, rubbing myself in it and bathing in it after killing a victim. And I even drank it when it was still warm. However, this is not the end of her story. Joanna has plans for herself in the future. At the end of her blog, she writes, when I get out of prison, I could work again with the cartel, but I don't want to. This served me as an experience and not so much because of the confinement. The confinement does not end you. The personal experiences that you lived while in confinement finish you off. Here in jail, my parents died, but when I leave here, I will leave with one hand behind and the other in front. I will find myself in great financial need and who is going to pay me 8,000 pesos a day to just be on the street for four hours? It's always tempting to come back. Kiwana is still lucky that she got to be a Sicarius. Most often, women in cartels are subjected to dangerous and victimizing roles. Whether young or elderly, women transport illicit substances by strapping them to their bodies, swallowing plastic capsules filled with these substances, or inserting these capsules into themselves. This becomes deadly if the substance-filled capsules burst while inside the body. The money they get for doing this is extremely low. A woman who works as a low-level mule may be subject to maximum prison sentence due to harsh narcotic laws in Latin America. However, the question remains, why do cartels hire women assassins? There are many answers to these questions. Some researchers say that in the past few years, men have died and most of their wives have been widowed and left with no money. These widowed women then contribute to their husband's legacy. And there are other reasons too. In this falling economy where people are losing jobs and spending money has become a problem. These drug cartels offer an affluent amount of luxuries to the people, but these cartels don't usually hire educated people. They hire vulnerable people who would do anything for money. And that is a place where these hit women typically come. Most of these kids are either kidnapped from their households at a very young age, or they come from a place where they have no emotional or mental support from their family, or they come from elaborate prostitution rings. Many hit women have dead or fleeing husbands, and they have babies to feed. The cartels give them money, freedom, fame, and even a daunting stature in the criminal world. But these crimes committed by Juana are much more than just being a mule. This is the story of an innocent girl who was lured into cartel life and taken to Napa.